Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of my tennis videos. In this video I'm gonna talk about mainly Dominic Thiem's performances against Grigor Dimitrov. One of the fourth round matches that ended earlier today and uh, Dominic Thiem, my number one pick, my main man that I fought before the tournament that's gonna lift the trophy. Last year's runner-up crashed out in a brutal performance, a terrible, brutal performance. It was... Uh, I have never actually seen Dominic Thiem play tennis as bad as he did against Dim Grigor Dimitrov. It was, according to me, Santa Claus tennis from Dominic Thiem's side. He was not on court, both mentally and physically, because Dimitrov won fair and square. He didn't play like he was in the zone. He didn't play like the baby Federer that people have hyped through the years. He made an okay performance, the Grigor Dimitrov. He did himself not rock solid performance in my in my opinion. He did men of for Sarah also. But this match, nothing worked from, from team side. He was not moving right on court. His forehand was outrageous bad in this match. It was like a junior was playing tennis. He made too much unforced errors in the, in the free sets he played. He got bageled. He should be ashamed of himself. Because a player like Dim Grigor Dimitrov is not a superb returner. He should have... Uh, take advantage of his own serve a little bit more better uh, for a team, but the match against Kyrgios drained him mentally and physically. The, it, it, we got to receive today. We saw that his legs was not as fast as it was in the beginning of the tournament. And a guy like Tim, who is, I think, 27 or 28 years old, should be in his physical prime. But he have showed uh, last year in the uh, AU final when he lost against Novak, when he was on his way to win. It was the same at the ATP finals. He was the better player against Medvedev, in my opinion. But his physique, together with his unforced errors, of course, which is a natural cause. If, you, if you're not moving uh, around well, you will do, do those mistakes. And that's what Dominic Thiem did. He was physically drained. He didn't. He didn't play because this courts are courts in Melbourne are super hyper fast, and that gives you less time to think. That gives you less time to react. That gives you less time to swing. And if you have huge swings, a la Dominic team, you will get punished if you don't take the right footsteps on the baseline on the court and move well. And that's not something he didn't do in this match. Because we saw from the beginning, we saw from the beginning, Dominic Thiem, he's not hitting right. He's not hitting clean. He's hitting so much unforced error. He was up 3-1 in the first uh, set with, with the break point. He was up 3-1 in the second set, but gave away the game and the set to Grigor Dimitrov. And I think that he should be very glad uh, that he got this early, or should I say, late Christmas gift. Because in my opinion, everybody who knows tennis have seen Dominic Thiem much, 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 much better on higher higher quality tennis from him. We have seen that from the Austrian guy many times the last three years. And this was the worst performance I have seen from, from Dominic Thiem. All right, let's go into the match stats. Dominic Thiem won only 55% of his first serves in and 32 of his second serves in. That explains a lot why he lost this match. And uh, Grigor, on the other hand, won 71% of his first serves and 58% of his second serves. Dominic Thiem only created uh, 25 winners and 41 unforced errors. That's not okay in three sets. And uh, Grigor, 25 winners, 18 unforced errors. That's okay. He, he, he did an okay, but not a convincingly uh, performance. Uh, because look at teams, uh, guys that he competes with. If you count out Nadal and Djokovic, who always delivers. 
we have Medvedev who have won multiple Masters tournaments. He has stacked them like a couple of them now. The same with Zverev, who has, by the way, taken the first set against Lajevic. I think he will set his foot in, in the quarterfinal. And um, he will play against the winner between Raonic and Djokovic. 100% healthy Novak knows how to take care of this big service like Raonic. It's like appetizers for him. Uh, he does, he, 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 Raonic won't win this match if Novak... He's in 100% shape. That's for sure. 100% sure about that. Look at the head-to-head -head stat. That says everything. Novak loves to return those big serves. He and Raonic has an okay forehand. He, he's in a little bit better version of John Isner. He only has a huge serve and a huge uh, forehand. His movement is okay. His shot-making skill and shot tolerance are terrible on this level if you compare to other dudes. All right, uh, Dominic team. What can I say? I'm very, I'm, I'm very disappointed. I'm very disappointed. That's why I felt I have to do this video right immediately after the his loss because I have to put out my aggression, my uh, disappointment in this video. Otherwise, I've, I would have to wait until the fourth round was uh, all of the fourth round matches was played because I'm gonna, I will, I, I, I was gonna do a. Uh, uh, recap of the first week but I felt like I have to do it now because I'm so angry about Dominic Thiem's performance not because I picked him as the number one because he's the guy who's going to challenge he has the firepower he has the tools he has the strength he has the length in his shots but today he did a Wawrinka performance a Stan Wawrinka performance when you don't hit clean where you give away the match where you are in Santa Claus mode, but enough about this Santa Claus term now. I'm I'm so um, fed up with that. So let's go into the other performances we have watched before this match, and that was a guy. It come as a shock to me that he has come so far, but this guy has really blown the tennis lovers around the world away. With his huge forehand, with his great serve, with his great shot making skills, with his shot tolerance that reminds me of a super experienced tennis player that I that I played on the tour for like 15 years. I think that's the qualifier. Uh, I think he was he, he qualified for the tournament. Karatsev, the Russian dude that I'm super impressed with. He was down under two sets to zero against Aliasime. He showed superb mental strength and delivered tennis out of this world when it was necessary. He came up with the goods. He just took care of Felix like it was nothing. He hit 37 winners and made 46 unforced errors. Felix did 29 winners and 41 uh, unforced errors. He won 77% of behind his first serve and 48% behind the second serve. And Aliasime was closer that numbers. He served a little better on, on, on his... Uh, he got more rewarded on his second serve. He won 51% of his second serve and 74 in his um, first serve. So if you look at the stats, it was pretty close. But Karatsev made a little bit more winners. He was a little bit more brave in this match. He went for the trigger more than him. And uh, when it came to a physical combat, he was a stronger dude in this match. It could have gone either way before the match. I talked with my dear friend, Mr. Inter Interi, the best YouTuber on uh, YouTube. Uh, this guy doesn't get enough recognition, my dear friend, Inter Interi, because he is here working his butt off. He's delivering videos all days. Every day he delivers one or two videos. I don't know how he can come up with all this motivation. I'm not a, that kind of a guy. I do my videos when I want to, but Inter in theory should get more props than he got. I know he's well respected. The tennis fans that know tennis loves his podcast. They love his videos. And I will want to take time and just praise him again. I've done that many times in my video, but this guy is outrageous. He's on a on, on whole nother level. Inter in theory... My friend, keep up with the good work. I love your videos like you always know. I talk with you frequently. For those who don't, doesn't know, 
Inter Interi is here to stay, folks. He's not disappearing anywhere. If you have any topics, any suggestion, suggestions, just text him. He will take care of your request with a smile, my friends. All right. The next four, couple of four, uh, fourth round matches is between Rublev and Rude. I think Rublev will prevail and take on Medvedev, who's going to meet the American McDonald in his fourth round uh, battle. They will uh, meet each other in the quarterfinal, and we know that Medvedev takes really good care of Rublev when they have met before. And we have Tsitsipas against Berrettini, who hasn't convinced me super, superbly in this tournament. He has played okay tennis. He won three sets in three straight tiebreak sets against Khashanov yesterday. Uh, his forehand is okay. His serve is okay. He lives on that, those two um, shots. Otherwise, he's very vulnerable outside that. He returns okay, but when he plays a better opponent like Tsitsipas, I think that we have he will have difficulties. But you never know. We have seen many upsets and teams crash out was the biggest upset so far. More will come, I, I can guarantee you. Will it be one of these guys? You never know. And then we have another tough battle between Rafael Nadal and Fabio Fonini. Fonini, if he wakes up on, on the right side of the bed, if he wants to play real good tennis in his mind, if he's, I think he's motivated because he has beaten Rafa four, four times before. So I know that uh, Fabio Fonini can come up with, good, uh, the, with the goods. He can come up with the great tennis that can disturb Rafael Nadal. And since the this, this surface is so fast and Fonini is one of the most effortless players on tour together with um, Federer, of course, he takes the ball so early, so he will have time and he will take that ball early and he will try to punish Rafael Nadal. But we all know Rafael Nadal, the highest low level of all. The guy that never gives away a point for free. You have to really earn the victory, the, the, the point. Everything, you have to be in 100% shape, almost, to beat Rafael Nadal. Because Rafael has looked vulnerable on his fast courts. We have seen that in his matches. He has won pretty comfortably, if you look at the number of straight sets in every victory, every match. But some of the guys has pushed him a little bit, but... When it most mattered, he came up with the goods and he delivered, and but not convincingly. Because, let's face it, if you have watched Nadal for his career, all of the competition that he faces in the first week are junior competition for him. It's breakfast, it's warm-up, it's, uh, it's like bringing lambs to the slaughter when Rafael Nadal plays the first week at Grand Slam. It doesn't matter if it's Wimbledon, French Open, US Open, Australian Open. Rafael Nadal takes good care of his opponent. Like nobody else. He's not a Federer. He's not a Djokovic that can drop a set here and there on his way to a quarter, to a final. Now, Rafa Nadal will now face his first big test. And I actually think that uh, Fonini can rob him one or two sets. He can win also. But we never know with Fonini. If he wakes up in a good mood he and plays the tennis that he's capable of, that we have seen him produce... When, he, uh, when he's in the zone, Rafa will have a difficult task to take his teeth into Fonini. It, this match will go the distance if he if Fabio walks up on the right place. And if Nadal continues to play like he has does, done through this tournament, I think that Fonini has a real shot here. But Rafa is Rafa. I will put my money on Rafa like I have done in my preview. So we'll see. I think that the Greek... Tsitsipas will meet Rafael Nadal in, in one of the quarters. And Rublev against Medvedev. And Zverev will probably take on uh, Novak Djokovic if he's not injured. Because they will both win. Zverev will take out Lajovic. And Djokovic will take out uh, Raonic. Alright folks, that's all. Take care and bye-bye.